Hello, and welcome to Eclecticist. Eclecticist is an investigation of everything from a British perspective by two brothers who consider themselves to be relatively normal human beings, and we do this one topic at a time. We are me, Benjamin De Campos, a designer and believer, and Jeffrey Campos, who is in London, who is an engineer and devil's advocate. Jeff? Hello, listeners. We choose a topic of interest, we spend a little time researching it, have a discussion, then we publish the notes. You can play along at home by going to eclecticist.co.uk. The main benefit is the fostering of a greater understanding of the world before we die and hopefully to prompt further thought and discussion from our listeners. The topic we will be discussing in this episode is fast food. Imagine you had a car idling in your living room. You'd be sitting there watching TV or playing Snap, breathing in air laced with toxic fumes. You would recognize that it's probably not a healthy place to sit because we breathe all the time. We also eat all the time. We spend each day of our lives literally putting food into our faces. Surely we would want only the best and healthiest foodstuffs passing through our mouths because in a very true sense, we are what we eat. But fast food, or perhaps more accurately junk food, is big business. Fast food restaurants are wide rife in our high streets, as are human blimps. Just how unhealthy is fast food, and is it like smoking? Are regular consumers of fast food compartmentalizing their brains like smokers do? Despite the ubiquity of McDonald's, KFC, and Pizza Hut, among others, there appears to be a change in the air. And trans fats are being banned all over the place, and more and more healthier alternatives such as Subway and Chipotle are appearing. Let's talk about fast food. We're not talking about Saranoff, Twistledon, Wickham fines, or verbal agreement forms. So fast food, I mean, I think everyone's at risk of thinking fast food means convenience food. And I think convenience food is the clade above which would contain everything that's just quick to prepare and perhaps quick to eat or is very accessible. So that would include sandwich shops, for instance. But I think it isn't. I think, I think we're taking the pejorative meaning, <clears throat> which is uh, cooked foods that are cooked in restaurants where you can have the option to sit in and eat or to take away. So I think we mean fast food as... KFC and McDonald's and restaurants like that. Well, and also lumped into that is cheap food, as in cheap quality, as in poor quality food um, that's stuffed with all kinds of preservatives to make them last longer on the shelf. I think that's also kind of part of that package. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, uh, again, it's a point of view because I think a lot of these fast food vendors would suggest that they have very high components in their foods. They have absolutely the best preservatives and the best um, flavor chemicals uh, and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, everything's free range and everything. I'm thinking in particular of McDonald's here, but everything's free range. Um, it's all British beef uh, in, in Britain uh, and everything else that might tickle the fancy of a uh, soil association member uh, who isn't in the know. Um, okay, well, that's interesting. I mean, we should talk about specific cases, I'm sure. I mean, McDonald's, uh, I think, has been just hammered by um, public awareness, I think, wouldn't you say? Th there's been a huge change in what McDonald's are doing in the last maybe even five years. No, for, su for sure. They've, they've had to change their strategy. But I mean, this is something that they, they've always done. You know, they've always adapted to a changing um, consumer landscape. Uh, as information comes out or, or trends come in, uh, McDonald's simply adapts like any business would need to adapt. And that's what they've done without actually fundamentally changing who they are, what they do, or the sorts of products that they deliver, I don't think. You know, they're, they're still selling hamburgers <laughs> that are by and large, you know, containing the same secret sauce as they had right from the very beginning of the 50s. Yeah, but they it's it's cheap food and I'm guessing it's cheap for a reason. When you say they're cheap, I mean just just again, as far as the definition is concerned, fast food, we're thinking quick, easy, that is to say not sophisticated food, it's easy to put together, there are few components. Uh, ubiquitous in that, you know, typically we're talking about chains or we're talking about a type of food that is found everywhere and is quite popular. Uh cheap, 
to purchase. Um, tasty, relatively, that is to say, tasty enough to keep you coming back. And um, and fun, fun and exciting, perhaps, to a, a particular age range. I put that in there, fun and exciting, because I think there is something sort of maybe fun and exciting about occasionally going to some somewhere like McDonald's. Or maybe not. But I'm kind of thinking at this a little bit more cynically, thinking that the actual raw materials that these vendors um, use, they have these average ingredients that they then cook in tons of sugar and salt, lots of fat, um, that way to make poor quality ingredients taste better. Um <clears throat> Well, again, on, if we're talking about McDonald's in particular, we can talk about the quality of the ingredients. Now, they constantly advertise the fact that they use grade A minced beef from, you know, recognized high quality beef farms. Uh, and they use grade A eggs, uh, all free range eggs. And the milk is all organic. Um they list all of these boxes that they've ticked. Um, so when you question the quality or the derivation of their foodstuffs, I think they already have a, a built-in defense, <clears throat> excuse me, which would suggest that they've actually gone out of their way to ensure that the fundamental components are all, um, you know, unquestionably um, quality. So how do they keep their prices so low? Well, interesting you should say that. Are they low? I mean, if you go if you go to uh, McDonald's and you buy a meal, a deal, um, exactly what are you getting for how much money? I, I think you're getting not that much, uh, and you're paying quite a bit. Uh, you know, we already know the the the, gen the usual scam whereby they try and upsell you to a, a large meal, but of course they never vary the size of the burger. You still get the same size burger. Uh, would you like a large meal? Um, yes, okay. Uh, do I get a larger burger? No, you don't. You get a few more fries and you get a, you know, another couple of hundred milliliters of water <laughs> and you pay significantly more. So, uh, well, that's a scam, straight up. Uh, well, I, and, and, scam's a bit of a harsh word for that, I think. But McDonald's is, like, considerably cheaper than, like, an actual restaurant, say. And it's not that much more expensive than actually buying the raw ingredients from a supermarket well they have the advantages of economies of scale on their size of course if you compare a small independent restaurant with the, you know the mcdonald's menu um, even if that small independent uh, restaurant made exactly the same products uh, they couldn't possibly hope to compete of course with mcdonald's because of the economy of scale i think that plays a, a large part in it they've there's such a large centrally distributed um, manufacturer now that uh, really, you know, they're, they're dealing with absolute bottom basement prices from all of their suppliers. So they can undercut anybody on anything, or at least they can undercut anybody on any of their products and their very, very, very small menu. I mean, it's really just minced beef we're talking about here. I mean, pretty much <laughs> it's minced beef, uh, chickens, and uh, a very small quantity of fish, but by f by far and away, it's it's a minced beef restaurant. It's not just minced beef though, because you know you're talking about buns, you're talking about um, all the green stuff and the ketchups, uh, potato chips. There are a lot of potatoes involved, or fries, I should say, fries. Uh, there's there's you know there's a lot of groups there. There are, but I think the main draw is hamburgers, right? They sell hamburgers. Hamburgers meaning beef burgers, um, but that's the main product. So <clears throat> they build this product from cows. So they have lots and lots and lots of farmers who supply beef. They mince the beef up. So they have uh, many thousands of cows that they mince in effectively factories. Uh, they mix all of this beef together. So a single beef patty, which is cooked at site, I think, almost at site of slaughter, uh, is, is it contains beef that comes from many cows never never just the single cut that you see in advertisements oh for sure but that okay so i've heard a lot of um chatter about that type of thing it's like the, the there are on average four cows in every burger or components of four cows but 
apparently that's the same kind of strike rate with um with supermarkets it's like there's a very well known um like farmers market type supermarket here called Trader Joe's and their burgers contain meat from on average four cows is that a bad thing i i, I don't know I don't, I don't know i mean i think it could be a bad thing if you have an infection um there would be a greater um a greater potential for an epidemic i think because you could affect a greater number of people by effectively spreading contaminated meat farther afield uh no pun intended but uh, that could well be the same for you know even sort of higher grade up market gastro style um fast food purveyors like byron for instance perhaps you know they also have four cows worth of meat in every patty or at least that is to say meat from four cows i think there was um a fair old amount made out of that in the fast food nation book that was um a big part of the criticism of fast food eateries i think mcdonald's specifically we're talking about the amount of cows in a single burger yes uh, but, I mean, quality aside, quantity, I think, is quite low in individual meals at most fast food restaurants. I mean, chips are, you know, I mean, potatoes are bulky, you know, pure carbohydrates, add a lot of salt and fat to them. And, uh, you know, they, they seem to be quite a substantial amount of food. But um, I dispute that. Uh, you know, they have a lot, large surface area. The fries are very thin. And you have a lot of them. So there's a huge surface area there for fat and salt and sugar. Uh, and then you have a burger. And the patties are very thin. And, you know, it's like they're hammered out. You know, like you're, you're beating gold. Um, and then you have uh, a soft drink, uh, which is, you know, water. 99% water. And the water. bread. No, no, and the bun. That's not oh, and the, the, bun, the bun is like sponge it's like aerated it's like it's been injected with air to try and bulk it up to make it look bigger than it actually is i think you know you could probably compress all of the components uh in a mcdonald's meal into a you know a cubic centimeter if you <laughs> of solidity it just doesn't seem to be actually really when you think about it that much there and you're paying you know in the uk you're paying easily seven eight pounds for you know a super fast meal which was prepared, you know, with just incredible speed and reheated mostly. Because I think, uh, I suspect the burger patties are actually cooked at the factories where they are pressed. No. I believe so. Really? And effectively, they're being just reheated, not so much fully cooked. So I think a lot of things are almost part baked when they arrive at the restaurants. I could be badly wrong here, but I suspect they are. It's as little as they can possibly get away with doing in the restaurants themselves. Mostly everything, everything is prepared as much as possible off-site. For instance, they don't bake bread at the restaurants. Uh, you know, all the fries are already cooked, uh, already chopped up, you know, already formed. They're not, they're not um, actually making the chips uh, uh, in the restaurants. Um, I mean, this is just McDonald's I'm talking about, but I think, uh, you know, there's such a well-honed machine that um, I think they do as little as possible in the actual restaurants, probably just to maintain the quality and to maintain the taste. They want their products to be um, distinctive and, f and and taste like a McDonald's burger should. And in order to maintain consistency across their tens of thousands of restaurants, uh, they simply must centralize as much as possible. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you know, they, they can maintain a very high level of quality. Yeah, but I mean, I kind of don't quite 100% agree with you in that you don't see the meals as substantial because I think most adults probably won't just have a burger. They'll probably have like a quarter pounder or like a half pounder. I think occasionally they do those specials where they'll put two quarter pound patties and you're still talking about a quarter pound of beef. That's quite a lot. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I, I guess, I guess I just normally have a standard meal and I very go to McDonald's and I never feel too stuffed. I don't particularly want to eat more. <laughs> <laughs> but after leaving the restaurant, it's not too long before I'm actually hungry again. And I, I, the cynic in me would think that that's by design. They want you to come back. You know, they they want you to, to you know, they want your repeat business. It's some sort of retention uh, strategy. Yeah, I think they call that, or it's something to do with something they call the bliss point, where they kind of get you, 
like not quite full. <laughs> and so you want to come back and all of that. I might be wrong about that. Okay, so from this conversation, it sounds to me that McDonald's are interested, or at least they've made changes to their menu to make it appear as though they actually offer some healthy food. You're talking about free-ranged eggs, um, you know, grade A, whatever you call it in the UK, beef patties and all of this kind of thing. So is McDonald's a healthy option? Well, I think certainly they... <clears throat> They add as much salt, fat, and sugar as they possibly can get away with. This is how I feel. I, I can taste the sugar in their bread. Um, you know, they, they automatically salt all the fries without asking. You have to specifically ask them not to salt the fries, uh, and then it'll take you an extra half an hour to get them. Uh, on, in all the new McDonald's restaurants, they have ordering computers where you can place the order yourself, and then simply go to the uh, desk when they call your number. And there is no option to, you know, say, hold the salt on the fries. Uh, so I think it's in their interests to make the food salty. You know, you may drink more of their sodas. Uh, it's in their interest to put more sugar in there because sugar is addictive. Uh, they're a business and they're cultivating their market and uh, they know what they're doing. They want to really punch your taste buds when you visit. Um, taking advantage of the fact that you may uh, have an innate uh, feeling towards McDonald's and other fast food restaurants as it is somewhere to visit on a special occasion. And there is something fun and exciting about it. And they want you to remember it. Uh, and they punch you in the face with all of this uh, fat, sugar, and salt. I mean... That's kind of what I said uh, near the top of the show about the whole fat, sugar, and salt thing. I think how I view it is they're using those um, ingredients, fat, sugar, and salt, to uh, make poor quality ingredients that little bit more palatable. But, but are, are they poor quality ingredients? Well, well, this this is what you've been mm. challenging, so so that's interesting. But uh, the other thing that puts me off, I mean, okay, so that's fine. I'll go away and I'll think about my feelings towards McDonald's. But the other thing that puts me off is just how sort of calculated everything is. Just how, not just focus groups, but it sounds like their food is infinitely sort of um, processed in terms of scientists working out exactly what's the most of, what's the most they can get, get away with in this way and how it'll make us feel and that and all this kind of thing. And something about that puts me off. I mean, I'd much rather go somewhere where they just like, you know, have a lump of food and they cook it for you and there it is. I think a lot of the criticism that's aimed at McDonald's as far as any cynicism is concerned is that they are a business robot machine that simply wants to generate is the absolute maximum profit they can from their formula. And the sky's the limit as far as scientists and calculation and logistics and strategies are concerned and it's a bit cold and uh, clinical and I think if you have a big issue with that maybe you have an issue with capitalism because that's just capitalism you know they have shareholders that they need to feed and uh, they have a formula and they're going to hone that formula they want to know their customer better than their customers know themselves they're going to have prototype restaurants they're going to experiment with their food and their menus and they're trying to build the perfect strategy to extract absolutely as much money and loyalty from you as they possibly can so really we should be um <clears throat> championing mcdonald's and endorsing mcdonald's because of this very initiative you know they really are striking the bell for um capitalism and growth well, I mean, what you didn't mention there is a huge plus for McDonald's, and that's um, how many people they employ. I mean, they give jobs to everyone. I mean, I wouldn't hazard a guess as to how many people are actually employed by McDonald's. I mean, obviously, you know, they're burger flipping jobs and only meant to be a sidestep. Though McDonald's have actually, in recent times, kind of uh, tried to go on record as to um, making the case that their jobs are actually could be a good career move yeah, absolutely well they have different tiers like any uh like any large organization but i think they've certainly capitalized on the um student job position and uh they basically pitch it as a student job position and say you know it's an excellent uh 
introduction to the world of work and uh this you should see this as a a stepping stone to greater things and that we want to be a part of your glittering future but but i think um again the cynic in me would imagine that employing people is not very high up on um on mcdonald's future agenda they i don't think they care to hire anybody and if they really could get away from hiring anybody at all uh, they'd do that people are a liability people are a biohazard um if you could just fully automate the restaurants uh you know i think they would do it and i think they are prevented from doing that probably by governments uh, because of all the jobs that would disappear um so they, they you know they very often i can look behind the counter at mcdonald's and see literally 20 people and i think you know vending machines could genuinely do this you could seriously cut down on those numbers and, and automate it can be done uh look at car factories you know they're making arguably much more complicated um products uh, and yet you know humans are far far and few between um and it works and uh you get a higher level of quality i think uh mcdonald's and their and their uh their peers are prevented from doing this i think because of the jobs no i think that's a that, that's not a good analogy with the whole car factory thing it's like yeah sure car factories but with mcdonald's you're actually going in and you're speaking to a human who places your order and when you buy a car you're speaking to a human who actually goes and places your order and I just have a feeling that people quite like that sort of social interaction. I mean, I'm sure the what you described earlier is kind of going in and punching your order into a machine and going and picking it up will sort of be part of their restaurants. But I think humans generally like to see other humans. Um, I think that's true. But um, as far as cars are concerned, in America, you're n you're not allowed to buy cars from anybody other than car dealers. The government actually forces car manufacturers to sell through dealers and not sell direct. This has been a big, a big uh, hot topic in the United States with the um, the appearance of Tesla. Um, this Elon Musk fellow wants you to be able to order a car online, specify and order a car online, and have it delivered. They don't want you to go to a dealer who takes a cut. They want to be able to sell direct, but they're preventing. They're prevented from doing this by governments so <laughs> i think people would actually much rather um well not much rather but well i think in terms of fast food i think people would much rather not have to deal with anybody at a fast food restaurant i think i i would prefer to go to a restaurant if i knew a fast food restaurant if i knew that the food that i was getting was cheaper higher quality because because it, it is delivered from a hermetically sealed kitchen full of expert robots who make everything perfect every single time and my order is perfect every single time and there are no mistakes and i don't have to repeat myself i don't have to say i'd like to take it away please and then i'm asked again by the same person who had forgotten yes i would like yes. to take it away please no so i think I there's want a massive, it plain. I yeah, want it massive plain. massive efficiency gains uh could be had if we fully automated these fast food restaurants they're fast food restaurants that give me the food quickly and let me go away um it's the speed i want and i think humans slow everything down it's not a job for humans especially in the 21st century when we have such technology i think we are artificially prevented from uh from going down the robot route i i, I don't share that view I, I quite like to just have a little bit of social interaction when i go and buy food and i wouldn't like to go to a glorified vending machine for my meal not that I ever actually go to McDonald's. And this is the other thing I want to talk about. So me personally, me here, I never go to McDonald's. I haven't been to a McDonald's since I was probably with you actually in London. Me, you and dad probably went to McDonald's. And why is this? I mean, why won't I go to McDonald's? It sounds like from our conversation, they use good ingredients um, and it is cheap. You know, it's a cost effective kind of situation. So what is it that's putting me off? I think it's unhealthy. But do I have any grounds to think it's unhealthy? Um, <clears throat> they, they are high in fat and sugar and salt. McDonald's food just is high in those things. Now, that's not necessarily bad in and of itself. And it's highly dependent on 
your, you know, you as the consumer's general health. Uh, it depends what you do. I mean, if you run 10 miles a day and uh, eat fruit peels uh, most of the weekdays and have one fast food meal, uh, you know, once a week, well, then there is not going to be a problem. It's perfectly fine. If you have an obesity problem because you visit fast food restaurants every single day, uh, well, then there is a problem. So it depends who you're talking about. If you just examine the food itself, as you said earlier, it'll have probably all the major food groups in it. You know, on their menu, the food groups are available. And as long as you don't just walk into McDonald's and order six muffins um, and a Coke, you're probably going to be okay, you know, as long as you, you know, try and maintain a balanced diet. It's personal discipline. It's personal freedom. You know, you are free to kill yourself by eating the same type of food uh, to the point of toxicity uh but you know that's the, the the risks of freedom so i think it's unfair to point fingers at fast food restaurants and just say you are unhealthy if somebody eats nothing but your food uh, for a year like that um the chap who said supersize me uh similarly you can't point a finger at a chocolate shop and say you're unhealthy if somebody ate nothing but your products for a year you know they'll be dead <laughs> That's a ridiculous thing to say. It's because of the success. It's it's the success factor again. They're really successful, these fast food restaurants, and I'm not just talking about McDonald's. Uh, and then, you know, people want to want to take them down by pointing out potential flaws or, or issues and problems based on dodgy statistics. Yeah, I guess. I guess there's kind of ethical parts of this, this sort of discussion. First of all, the thing you said about if you run 10 miles a day, yeah, sure, eating a burger from McDonald's every now and again won't won't kill you or won't have any kind of significant effect on your health. But people who run 10 miles a day, I have a feeling they never go to McDonald's. <laughs> True. This is, and, and I think it's because, like me, they just see it as kind of just unhealthy crap, crap food. And they don't want to eat it because they don't want to feel lousy afterwards for having done something like eat such guff. But mm. I think that might be totally unfair. I think it is a little bit unfair. I think uh, the the claim, the oft heard claim, that the quality of food at um, fast food restaurants is low, I, I just don't think that's true any longer. If if it, if it ever was, I certainly don't think it is true any longer. Certainly, you don't hear of any major food poisoning, you know, events at fast food restaurants. I, I certainly never hear of them. I mean, McDonald's seems to have a spotless record here in the UK. Uh, so you can be sure you're eating at least safe food when you visit one of the restaurants. And of course, they're keeping up with the times in terms of uh, image. I mean, if you go into a McDonald's restaurant these days, I mean, they're, you know, very modern looking, very clean, you know, reason reasonably aesthetically neutral. There's nothing to hate about them. Uh, and now that they're trying to sort out the ordering procedure, I think uh, things are really looking up. Hmm. So you mentioned there about um, you said you know we we've been kind of talking about McDonald's a lot, but you just said there this doesn't this isn't just about McDonald's. You know this goes for all fast food restaurants, as in they're all offering healthy food options. But is that true? I mean, could you say the same thing about Burger King and KFC? And I, ha I have a really limited experience of fast food restaurants. It must be said. I'm aware of all of the fast food restaurants, and I have been to most of them at some point. Um, but uh, I've had the most experience with McDonald's, uh, which is not a lot of experience, but I certainly have been in them, and I've had their menu items. Um, but if we think about um, their immediate competitors, which in the UK appear to be Burger King, who I think is maybe a very small percentage of the sort of... Uh, market reach that mcdonald's has but has a similar sort of menu and then you have kentucky fried chicken um, you'll notice that these are all american businesses um, and then there's a new kid on the block which is uh um <coughs> pronounced chipotles uh, around my neck of the woods but you probably know it as chipotle, chipotle. which is uh chipotle which is a sort of american faux mexican theme fast food restaurant which specializes in outrageously disproportionate portion sizes. I mean, literally, their foil-wrapped bread bags of beans are the size of your head. Uh, if you eat it 
chipotle i mean you're not going to eat for the next couple of days it's just incredible how big their portion sizes are but they're incredibly popular i think they are as popular as nando's which is a, a chicken and chips specialist in the uk um they're doing extremely well and when you look at the kind of food that we're talking about here it's all the same it's all particle food so it's uh, i've always had this opinion the it's like ikea ikea is like everything at ikea is made out of one substance uh like porridge that they just shape they just you know they, they just squeeze into different shapes and paint it and then you know that's that's a, a deck chair that's a chest of drawers that's a cabinet it's all made out of the same uh, minced uh, mdf like material the same goes for fast food you rarely get a single cut of meat or something identifiable in a fast food restaurant it's always something that's been minced mcdonald's is the champ at this they mince everything even the fruit you think you know can i have an apple nope we can't give you an apple we're going to give you a sliced up apple which came from eight different apples. <laughs> why Why are you doing this, McDonald's? Why? Because you want it to spoil quicker? Uh, yes? Uh, no? Who knows? I don't know. There's a strategy there, but uh, let's, uh, let's be kind and, and peg it to uh, the maintenance of consistent quality. Yeah, but there is a huge exception to that with all the chicken places. You could only chicken joint, and you'll be able to buy you know, recognizable parts of a chicken. Recognizable, but tampered with perhaps i mean i read stories of chicken that was injected with water just to make it look larger <laughs> again trying to puff things up to make them look bigger so you can sell you know less for more uh, again that's that's horrifically cynical and i'll definitely um pop some research along these lines into the show notes hmm. um i think uh but, but branching out uh, our experience of fast food uh vendors so we have McDonald's, which really is everywhere, and in every country. It's truly amazing. Um, we have coffee shops, but I'm excluding those from fast food because I think I sort of think they're more like a sandwich shop. I think, uh, you know, that's a, a slightly different category. Yeah. Um, but we do have uh, quite a lot of... Uh, we obviously have billions of independent fast food shops and um, independent fast food chains very small ones um and the one that really springs to mind is uh, wimpy wimpy is very peculiar wimpy is a sort of fast food restaurant in the uk only i believe and they are quite distinctive from other fast food restaurants in that they have cutlery and crockery and you know actual ceramic mugs for your tea and uh, knives and forks uh, so it's more like a sit-down proper restaurant, and yet they sell like a cafe. It's a cafe, yeah, like a ca it's a cafe, I suppose. But it, it it claims it is a fast food restaurant, and indeed, it's been around since McDonald's first started getting into the game. And they, and they are so called. Wimpy is so called for the uh, the uh, corpulent character in Popeye who always walked around with a bag of hamburgers. That's oh, really? where the name Wimpy comes from. Oh. And. Um, and, uh, you know, they have their star burgers. They have their bender, which is uh, sort of like a hot dog, <laughs> circular, a hot dog cut in such a way as to describe a circle in a bun. Uh, a torus, I suppose I would say. Um, and so they're quite peculiar and still around. And uh, you can really get an egg burger. That is to say, a hamburger that has an egg, a fried egg put on the top that was actually fried in the restaurant. Now, McDonald's have fried eggs as well, but they're not quite fried eggs. Everything's just not quite as you would expect at McDonald's. Uh, a very long time ago, I made my own McDonald's hamburger. Uh, McDonald's at the time were touting the fact that they use 100% ground beef from British cows with just a pinch of salt. That's, that's it. It's 100% beef with a pinch of salt. There's nothing added. There's nothing to it. And in the advertisement, um, they would show a single cut of beef and putting this single cut of beef into a meat grinder to make the patty, which was just lies. Where was the advertising standards agency when that happened? Anyway, so I went home and made a burger out of 100% beef and a little pinch of salt, um, fried it up and put it in a bun, and it tasted absolutely nothing like any McDonald's hamburger. 
Okay, well, there's a whole constellation of variables about why McDonald's hamburgers taste the way they do. For a star, I think I know the ad you're talking about, and he showed this piece of meat. But I really, I remember the meat didn't look particularly lean. So I think they were being kind of honest there. It was heavily marbled. <laughs> there's a lot of fat in that. So that's um, one variable. It's like, I don't know what the, uh, what the you know, the, the lean is. is. of fat. Yeah, yeah, to the actual meat that they're using. And I have a feeling it, it's not particularly lean, the uh, the meat that they use. Which is a good thing. It's more flavorsome. Meat with absolutely no fat in it, you can't taste it. There's no flavor at all. The, the flavor is in the fat. There's, there's The flavor doesn't come from anything else. I don't know. Well, we can The actual muscle fiber, the, the actin and myosin little um, right. muscle fibers, they taste like absolutely nothing whatsoever. And we knew that um, as recently as the development of that artificial hamburger that cost 450 million pounds or whatever it was. <laughs> God, yeah. That was that had no fat in it, and therefore there was It no didn't flavor. taste that great. Yeah, but, I mean, we can have that conversation because I actually have um, done a little bit of experimentation with, uh, with various meats, various beef, and I found that the 95% lean beef is the nicest because i just don't don't like the taste of all that fat i can just feel it in my mouth and i can feel it in my stomach so maybe it's a psychological thing on on my part that i prefer the leaner cuts or the, the leaner minced beef so yeah so going back to that um ad to try and recreate the mcdonald's experience how do mcdonald's actually prepare their their 100 percent ground beef patties you know that that's the biggest one what do they actually do to them do, do they fry them in the restaurant they're fried in the restaurant. No, but just just generally. Yeah, but you said earlier in this conversation that you don't believe that they were actually cooked in the restaurant. No, I, I think they're fried in the restaurant, but they're actually cooked during um, packing in the factories. So they are distributed. They are already partially cooked. So how do they cook them in the factories then? That that's the big one. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe well, that's there, a secret. There you are. I'll, I'll have to find that out. But this is my suspicion. I could be completely wrong. I'll add this to the show notes. Uh, but I think, again, my suspicion is that they are, they're designed to do as little as possible uh, in the restaurants themselves for for reasons of speed and consistency and everything we mentioned before. Okay, but just and, and one more variable is the difference in taste, depending on whether or not that is a cow that eats corn and a, or a cow that eats grass or a cow that eats other cows, <laughs> say. <laughs> or the uh, the beef is flavored. So it doesn't matter where the, the beef comes from. It comes from little cows, big cows, old cows, young cows, mad cows, corn cows, um, fish cows. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of beef it is or where the beef comes from because it's all flavored to How do become they flavor exactly it? the same. Well, that's flavored? where all the chemicals. That's where all the chemicals come in. So is it a hundred percent ground beef? I mean, surely chemicals would come under the ingredients uh, rubric. Well, I mean, it depends when you when the additives occur. I mean, you could say it's 100% beef at the very beginning of the process, but by the end, it is no longer 100% beef. Or you could say, you could just re-define re, um, what beef means. What do you mean 100% beef? <laughs> Are you talking about 100% beef muscle right. tissue? Are you talking about 100% components that come from a cow? I mean, you know, does it have fingernails and uh you know noses in it who knows what, what does beef mean it becomes a semantic tap dance yeah thing. i think so i think so i think that i think a lot of that is involved because if you think about it i mean you know the the we all know the incredible similarity of flavors you know across mcdonald's restaurants i mean they really are incredibly consistent i fully expect and am delivered exactly the same experience at any mcdonald's i've ever been to which is a feat of engineering. You mentioned Byron earlier. and uh, It's sort of it, an upmarket, expensive, gourmet hamburger restaurant. Yeah, and um, you know there are a few places like that here. I, th I generally think burger culture is actually a much larger thing here in the United States, or at least here in California. But I have a feeling across the whole U.S. it's, it's a real burger-eating nation. Um, so there are sort of many places like Byron. Actually, there's a lot of food trucks here you can have gourmet food from a truck and when people talk about food trucks they're generally talking about sort of gourmet street food whereas in the uk if you talk about eating food from a truck it's a completely different experience <laughs> yeah there's nothing to do with no. being gourmet at all um but the difference between say a byron burger and, and a mcdonald's burger is huge just obviously it's huge 
difference in price, but I mean, the taste is so wildly different. I mean, how, how are they so different? And this is why I think to our earlier conversation that it's just they use they must use much better quality materials to to produce their burgers. Again, it depends what you mean by quality. McDonald's have the highest quality chemicals, uh, probably. But a Byron burger, <laughs> highest quality agrochemicals. A, a Byron burger tastes so much better, uh, and it does. It's it's night and day. It's like a completely different category of food. Um, you know, the bread is better. It's more like real bread. And if you were just to eat. The bun from a McDonald's burger, it just, it honestly, it does not taste like bread. It really doesn't. And we've all read the stories about how um, McDonald's hamburgers have been found in the bottom of dumpsters and uh, they're in perfect condition. No mold. <laughs> they haven't degraded at all owing to the, um, the preservatives that are in them. And uh, I read an article about how preservatives are uh, a military invention. The, mil- the U.S. military is behind most preservatives, food preservatives. They had a real huge um, uh, research and development department dedicated to try trying to preserve um, military rations for as long as they possibly could. And their design goals were to preserve, uh, you know, all the major foodstuffs that soldiers would likely eat for five years. And they've pretty much achieved it with everything. They can preserve anything. Uh, you know, they originally used tins. You know, everything was canned uh, back in the 40s and 50s. Uh, but of course, cans and tins are very bulky and um, awkward to use and heavy. Uh, and for a long time, um, they're in sort of plastic um, sort of uh, bags, <laughs> really, really uh, thick plastic pouches and uh, they last for years. So all the fast food industry and pretty much all the entire food industry owes its uh, long shelf life to uh, the U.S. military. And uh, so, yeah, when you see these burgers just not not rotting, uh, it's because they're absolutely um, crammed to the gills with uh, lots of interesting chemicals, which uh, which is in every, everybody's interest to have. Shelf life is important, but... It does seem a little bit unnatural. Well, the implication there uh, is not fresh. If you have a lot of preservatives, that means food is not fresh. Exactly. Quite right. Quite right. Yep. That's exactly it. That is so a problem. That's the problem. But yeah, I mean, we've all seen that uh, bit of time lapse film that shows like a McDonald's or a Big Mac or whatever it is over the course of a month, <laughs> just not doing anything, just staying in this cupboard or whatever it was. Anyway, so just going down our list here, you've written controversies. So what is this uh, Chick-fil-A controversy? Oh, uh, Chick-fil-A. So this is a largely chicken fast food restaurant in the United States. And I believe the owners of this restaurant, it's a family business, even though it's a large chain. And they're very religious of the Christian strain. And I think they had a big problem with gay marriage. And they, they made this public, their issue with gay marriage. And of course, instantly became a target uh, by the media and were massively ridiculed by everybody, uh, which cost them, I think, some revenue. Uh, but I think pretty much... And, and they, they sort of kind of slightly backpedaled. Um, but uh, that was uh, the owners of a fast food restaurant um, having an opinion on something and uh, being pilloried for it because of its anti-social implications. Yeah, I have a feeling that sort of thing happens all the time. There is a very well-known uh, chain, fast food chain here in California called In-N-Out Burger. And they've actually successfully sort of positioned themselves um, as a healthier fast food place. It's like McDonald's but healthy is kind of the image that they have. It's very kind of like 50s Americana is their sort of style. But um, they're they make a big deal out of how their food is like farmer's market quality. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to remember what I actually know about In-N-Out Burger. They're, they're highly regarded as, uh, you know, they're producers of very high quality foods and they don't cheat. Uh, and they have a very reasonable um, advertising campaign. Uh, they're quite local and uh, they're good employers. Uh, you know, the uh, staff get a really good deal. That's the other thing, the ethical side of, of this, which I kind of want to touch on. But yeah, so they are all of those things. And 
I personally think that they're way overrated. To me, it just tasted like McDonald's. But I understand, you know, they're a more ethical brand and so on and so forth. But it's a Christian company. And uh, I currently work for a magazine here in Los Angeles called Playboy Magazine. And uh, the food truck... Never heard of it. Sorry? I've never heard of it. Well, yeah. It's because it's a magazine. Yeah. No one reads magazines anymore. There is an In-N-Out Burger food truck that isn't available to uh, to us, the staff, because the Christian owners just see it so immoral. Uh, our, our money's no good to them. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah the, the, yeah, the ethical part of this is something which I find quite interesting. And it's something which I'm thinking more and more about, which is meat, the meat packing industry, um, eating meat, eating dead animals. I'm actually sort of getting into a headspace that you were into, um, for listeners at home, Jeff was a vegetarian for uh, a good few years, I think. I haven't gone as extreme as vegetarian, but I find myself getting pretty, um, not grossed out, but be feeling pretty squeamish about the the journey <laughs> that the burger goes goes on before it reaches my mouth. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a problem. Um, I sort of see it as a problem similar to the car problem. This is another crazy car analogy here, but cars at the moment, uh, you know, they're filthy. They uh, have internal combustion engines and we have to feed them with fossil fuels. And, you know, people are kind of getting a bad taste in the back of their mouth about the whole car journey. Uh, lots of puns there. Um, and I think this is going to go away when we simply no longer have petrol cars and we move into the electric uh, era. Similarly, I think the squeamishness that we're all sort of fostering and developing in the back of our minds about cows and uh, chickens and everything that goes into fast food. I think it's a problem that will go away when we achieve more technological prowess in terms of designing, developing, and producing synthetic foods. I think uh, synthetic foods have yet to have their moment, even though, you know, corn and Soy, soy based uh, uh, foods have been around for a million years. Uh, I think they've yet to have their their day of, uh, of revolution, uh, but I think it'll happen. Similarly, I think uh, virtual reality is going to have that and battery technology is going to have that. It's, it's a matter of engineering. And I think we will be able to have hamburgers that taste exactly like hamburgers that we know and love, but are actually not from animals that have eyeballs yeah i mean that sounds great um I, i'm all for that i can understand why that would probably put a lot of people off oh because the, 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 the people who are afraid of gm and uh yeah but not just that just like, but just how unnatural the uh, that idea is it's like we're eating something completely made in a laboratory you know what the hell um which is fine uh but did you know that it's in this country anyway it is illegal as in you could be arrested if you try and film inside an abattoir? I did not know that. I've been to an abattoir. Were you filming? It, no, I wasn't filming, um, but it was a serious learning experience. It was really, you know, it's, it's really terrible. It, I mean, it's really real. It sounds horrific. It's actually really happening. <laughs> you know, you just, there's always that, um, that uh, trope that, um, you know, don't, you know, if, if you like sausages, don't ever le learn how sausages are made. Uh, and uh, if you had to kill your own animal, would you would you eat meat? Um, it's true that you know, just like remote control killing, uh, when you're you're not you're on the other side of the wall of an abattoir, it's a heck of a lot easier to uh, to masticate those morsels. Um, so I think it's 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 one of those things. This is the kind of uh, change in human thinking that comes about through experience and communication and knowledge. It overturns, you know, it overturns paradigms when you learn crucial bits of information. True for religion, true for food, true for fossil fuels and climate and all those sorts of things. So I think people are getting smarter and it's hurting, or maybe, maybe not hurting fast food businesses, but they're, they're having to change. And, and they are. You know, McDonald's is responding. You know, they're responding to the times. You know, when, when Starbucks, or rather Friends, that television show, uh, started popularizing super expensive gourmet coffee. Um, McDonald's was quick to capitalize on that. Now, McCafe, I think they sell more coffees than anybody else. No. I think so. Oh, I McDonald's do. Yeah, I'm McDonald's sure. sell more. Yeah, but more not the McCafe. I've only seen a few of those in my life. 
Well, I mean, they, they call all of their coffees and all the restaurants McCafe. Oh, do they? So, mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, changing times. <clears throat> but the people who work in abattoirs, I mean, I'm sure they're not psychopaths. I'm sure they're all normal people. And they might have at some point been just as squeamish as I am, but somehow got desensitized to it because it, it's a job. You know, yeah, absolutely. Which kind of yeah. is freaks me out a little bit. Um, I've, it's like, for example, you know the rotisserie chicken that you occasionally see in supermarkets? There's a really nice supermarket yes. around the corner from here. It's one of those. It's like the Waitrose of California called Gelson's. G E L S O N S. Wouldn't you say it's Gelson's? Gelson's. Yeah, it's not. It's Gelson's. It's a hard G. It's crazy. Anyway, they have really nice rotisserie chickens. I bought one, took it home was eating the flesh off the bone and it totally freaked me out. I mean, properly, like, just couldn't deal with this. Not only did I throw it away, but I had to put it in a bag and then take it outside to the trash. I just didn't want it in my trash. <laughs> um, put some heavy objects on the top yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, anyway, but uh, apparently I'm, I'm not alone in that. And um, a lot of people who are sort of, sort of anti-McDonald's types, they come at it from the treatment of animals and the eating animals trope <laughs> uh, they have a problem with. So anyway. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, in a hundred years, people look back and think we were barbarians for eating animals. It's absolutely going to happen. Fast food, I think, is never going to go away because of the convenience factor. You know, it's, it's convenient. People like hot food. Um, and if you have a, a hot food restaurant or takeaway near you, uh, and you don't have the time to go home and <laughs> make your own food, then of course the convenient factor wins, and I think there's lonely grow. And uh, you know, once we once we uh, get over the the uh, the health angle, uh, and actually, you know, all fast food is probably the healthiest food that you can eat, and you should never eat anything at home because you're burning oil and uh, killing yourself with carcinogens. Uh, come to our restaurants, get much higher quality. I think people will embrace. Um, fast food uh it, it's yet to have its golden age i think but I, I there's definitely a huge variety of fast food i was just thinking the other day that it's high time i visited a pie and mash shop now a pie and mash shop is a traditional fast food vendor uh in the uk predominantly in london called and what is it called pie and mash it's, and that's like their name it's not. It's, it's not, not a, a pie mash shop. It's a, it's a type. It's a type of restaurant. Oh right. So okay. this restaurant serves. You said vendor. Meat, I thought you meant as in pies. it was this one place called Pie and Mash. No, uh, they are all called Pie and Mash okay. shops, but it's not a brand. It's 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 a so, traditional East End kind of um, yeah. Eatery. So right, and uh, they have homemade pies uh, with uh, mashed potatoes that they actually mash themselves from potatoes, peel and mash. And also jellied eels, which used to be quite common in the Thames. Uh, God knows where they get them from yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, jellied eels and uh, jellied eels are exactly as they sound. They are jellied eels that you eat. Um, and I've had them and I thought they were quite nice. But And that was many years ago. But now I must say that the very idea just, just I mean, it's... It's the evolution of mind uh, that we're witnessing here because you know, <laughs> attitudes are changing at a rapid pace. Uh, and I think a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, stranger fast food restaurant fare uh, are giving the bums rush. Uh, you know, forget it. Yeah. So also on this little list of controversies here, we've got halal. Let's pin this down. What is halal? Okay, so halal... Um, now, I've noticed this. In fact, I noticed this on Friday when I went to a Subway restaurant. Subway is another American business, mostly a franchise in the UK, that sell sandwiches. It's a sandwich shop. Um, it's They bake their own bread. Yeah, so, so it's a USP, uh, or at least one of them is that they bake most of their bread on premises. Uh, they have flatbreads now that come frozen, which is... Uh, annoying because really and i think maybe even legally they need to toast them so if you don't have your flatbread toasted they legally have to tell you this comes frozen so are you sure you don't want to toast it and they're sort of nodding going you really want to have this toasted it's really tasty so really you shouldn't be eating bread that's been frozen you shouldn't it's generally a bad idea because of um microbial spores anyway I noticed on the menu that it said all the meat is halal. So all the meat that they serve 
in um, this subway that I went to presumably excludes pork products. I f- forgot to look. That's stupid of me because they normally have bacon. Uh, I would have loved to see if there was any bacon in there, but uh, maybe there wasn't. But it did say all the meat is halal, so presumably there's no pork products. So what that means is that the animals suffered. So in most abattoirs, if not all abattoirs in this country that are not halal um, <clears throat> or, or um, kosher, the animals are killed instantaneously or as in- instantaneously as we can imagine. That is, they have a, a bolt to the brain, a rivet or a bolt, a slug of metal. I they're like the electrocuted or something. That kills them instantly. It depends what kind of animal it is. I right. think cows are killed with bolts and chickens are electrocuted. Um, but halal means you need to bleed you need to bleed out the animals so you slit their throats and let all the blood um flow out so chickens they have their necks slit and they're thrown into a barrel and uh, when they start moving they're shaken off and uh, you know then slaughtered uh cows are hung upside down which is an amazing sight for you know cows are large animals and they have their their throats cut and uh, an enormous quantity of blood hot 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 steaming blood pours out this is while they're still alive yeah so uh, they bleed to death. Uh, that's what halal is. That's the uh, traditional um, Islamic way of slaughtering animals. So uh, Western sensibilities may balk a little bit at that. You know, it's, it's one thing eating meat. It's another thing knowing that that animal suffered. So that's the story of halal. And I think Subway is the only um, fast food-ish uh, vendor that I've seen advertise this. But I'm sure if you go to the East End or, you know, areas where there's a high concentration of Muslims, uh, you'll probably find uh, find that that is standard. So there's a little bit of controversy there. No, but there wouldn't be um, like any halal in a McDonald's restaurant, for example. They won't have a special McDonald's restaurant, which has halal meat, I would have thought. Well, I, I assume so. I mean, they have a McDonald's restaurants and Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants in Saudi Arabia, for instance. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I'm just have, talking um, about the West. So, so here and so, for example, in London. Actually, I was yeah. in a subway yesterday. I didn't notice any halal uh, notices on anything, and I certainly noticed they had bacon. Um, hmm. So maybe what you're talking about is a London thing for well, subway. Well, Mac- McDonald's do bacon bagels, so you'd sort of think, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, but uh, I saw a photograph of uh, a Kentucky Fried Chicken in Saudi Arabia the other day. It was right next to a McDonald's, and there's lots of Arabic writing on the signs. But next to those, there was a Starbucks, and the Starbucks logo is different in Saudi Arabia than really? you would have it here. They got rid of the woman. There's no woman. No. Yes. Really? That 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 that's offensive. That misogynistic that, culture is yeah, that odious. <laughs> To have uh, that Starbucks woman, whatever the hell it is, some sort of mermaid, that's too much to bear. And it's literally cut out and uh, sort of cropped out. Wow. Uh, you, you, I'll put it in the show notes, but oh. uh, it's <laughs> really quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, that is. But so halal then. Okay, well, that sounds absolutely horrible. The idea that these animals are bleeding to death. I don't want to eat halal meat. Yeah. So, yeah, halal is uh, good. Um, and uh, haram is uh, bad. So pork products, haram. Anything that hasn't been properly um, slaughtered is haram. So as a Muslim, you cannot eat anything unless... I mean, like it's like, uh, you know, um, Hasidic Jews or, or you know, uh, observing Jews won't touch anything unless it's kosher and literally has a seal of approval uh, from a rabbi. There's not many of them, though. Jews, no. <laughs> so there's like 15 million worldwide. So it's not such an impact on fast food. Restaurants. No, but the idea, but halal, even just that conversation just there about halal is just made me feel queasy. It's like, man, I would not want to eat halal meat. But what difference does that make? Me not eating it doesn't mean it'll stop being done. So people who are for reasons like that won't eat meat. I kind of wonder what it is that they're achieving. It's, it's like, what difference will you not eating this meat actually make? Besides you being you not having that meat in your stomach. Well, it's one fewer um, consumer. You know, it's it, there's a tipping point. If enough people stop, uh, stop demanding a particular product, then it's likely in a perfect capitalist world 
uh, that that product will become more expensive and therefore put off more consumers and then eventually disappear. Supply and demand. So I think it's uh, a few people, you know, every day. It, it's cumulative. I suppose. But that whole halal thing is just so gross. It, something needs to be done about that. But what? Who knows? But I'll tell you something else about um, fast food restaurants, in my experience. Um, they say there's this horrible myth about British people that we British people know how to queue. We know how to queue up for things. And in fast food restaurants, sometimes they're very busy and there is a need to queue. But unfortunately, British people, and possibly everyone, simply has no idea how to queue up. And when you're not explicitly told how to queue, you don't know what you're doing. So very often uh, in fast food restaurants, and certainly in McDonald's, I will go in and I will not know what to do. I went to Five Guys. This is a hamburger restaurant, just like McDonald's, except it's slightly different in that they will make your hamburger, wrap it in foil, drop it on the ground and kick it around a little bit and then give it to you because mm. they're hipsters. It's an American chain, I think. Yeah. So I went in and there's lots of people at the counter and there's lots of people behind the counter, but I have no idea where to go. Do I wait for somebody to motion me over, you know, some gesture, a middle finger gesture of some description? Or <laughs> do I try and catch somebody's eye? Do I hold my hand up? Do I just randomly stand behind somebody and hope that I get to the next cashier? I, I don't know what to do. There's there's no there's no ropes you know forming a queue. I just forced to have to speak to strangers. Are you, are you in the queue? Are, are you in the queue? Yeah, are you in the queue? I, I I'm forced to not even go in there. I'm forced to just about face and go somewhere else. I would much rather you know be faced with vending machines and and you know linear queues that I understand. Yeah, but a vending it's, machine uh, sounds like it might be the same kind of problem. It's like well, who's would that be the same problem? Maybe that doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe that argument doesn't hold at a vending machine. Yeah, you place you place your order on your on your mobile phone, and then you go when your order is called, you go and pick it up. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, no, I I, I get annoyed with those sorts of queue situations. But hey, if the UK has this reputation as queuers, I think that's a good thing. It sounds like a civilized country. Do you know what Italy is like, for Christ's sakes, when it comes to queuing? No, 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 but it's not civilized. That's it, it, a myth. <laughs> because when somebody jumps a queue in in Britain, then it's instant murder. It's simply murder. You jump the queue and I'll kill you. Or if you're queuing for ages and ages and ages and the person behind the counter doesn't tell you why or, or even acknowledge your existence or doesn't say something like, I'm really sorry, you know, we're, we're really working on this and I'll get to you as soon as possible. Unless you hear words like that, you'll get so angry that someone's going to get hurt but if you are if you do hear those words then you will queue for 10 years without making a sound it's a very peculiar culture here in britain yeah i think it's probably not just uk but yeah that's definitely a uk thing i think pubs um that comes into play quite a lot I think pubs are the most annoying of all. I think the situation you described there at Five Guys is like what happens in every pub. Yes. It's yes. Well, there it is. Uh automation is the only answer, I think. Um I think we've covered almost everything we intended to cover. Is there anything I've missed? Nope. I don't think so. I wanted to talk a little bit about Subway and Chipotle and we did. So there we are. Lovely. Well, you have been listening to eclecticist.co.uk. Uh, please pop along to our website. You'll find our show notes for all of our shows, all of our previous shows. Uh, there's a contact form at the bottom if you have any feedback or ideas for uh, shows that we need to cover. Uh, please pop it in and we'll have a read. Um, we don't know what our next topic is going to be, but we'll have a discussion. We'll figure it out and we'll post it on our page. Our outro music of choice uh, this time around is Fast Food Haven Cookout. It's the sort of music that you might have heard in a fast food restaurant back in the day when they played music in fast food restaurants. It's by DJ Harrison. It's from Jamendo. It has a Creative Commons license so we won't get sued. And uh, please feel free to bop along to it. We will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much and good evening.